Hmm, gosh, so much choice here. What have we got? Very flexible. Oh, three, three, two, a four, three, a thermal wetsuit, hip buoyancy. I don't know where to start. Well, whether you're new to triathlon and open water swimming or an old hand at it, choosing a new wetsuit can be an absolute minefield. There are so many choices out there, all offering different benefits. So which do you choose? Well, today we're here to help. I guess the first place to start is with the type of wetsuit. And a common question we receive is, can you swim in your classic surfing and water sports style of wetsuit? And the short answer is, yeah. But if you really want to enjoy the experience and be able to swim as best as possible, then we'd actually advise not to. Now, obviously these wetsuits have been designed to keep you warm, be protective and be durable. So they don't snag and tear quite so easily. That means they're made from quite thick neoprene that tends to be not as flexible. That means it's going to be restrictive around the shoulders and also hard to remove, which are two things that you obviously really want to avoid for swimming and triathlon. That said, the pioneers of our sport had to swim in wetsuits like this. It wasn't until around the mid 80s that Ironman athlete Dan Emperfield decided to design and create a specific triathlon wetsuit, ultimately to be able to help him to swim faster and also to be able to remove his wetsuit quickly. Obviously the wetsuits have developed considerably over the last 40 years with so many options to choose from. So let's take a look at those options. Well, yeah, this is where things get confusing because all different wetsuits have different types of neoprene in them, all with different thicknesses in different areas. So before you go racing ahead and simply choosing a wetsuit that you like the look of and is your favorite color, let us rein you in slightly because there is a very important detail that we need to discuss. What type of swimmer are you? And by that, I mean, how do you swim? Do your hips sink in the water? Do your legs sink in the water? Or are you relatively flat and neutral when you swim? If you're not sure, get someone to watch you when you're swimming, ideally in the swimming pool and obviously without a wetsuit where you're not getting any added and increased buoyancy from that. Or even better, get them to film you so that you can watch it back in your own time and see for yourself. Now, typically what we see with newer and weaker swimmers is their hips and their legs drop and sink when they swim. But fortunately, you can get a wetsuit to match your swimming style and to help you. Now, if you are someone that has sinky hips and legs when you swim, what you're looking for in a wetsuit is increased buoyancy in the legs as opposed to the chest. So it'll be slightly less in the chest and slightly more neoprene and thickness in the legs. And that's going to help and adjust the tilt and the position of your body when you're swimming. Whereas for those lucky folk out there that are relatively flat and neutral in the water, they obviously don't want to change their body position. And so we're looking for a wetsuit with equal thickness and buoyancy from the chest to the hips. Now, fortunately, most brands cater for for this and our channel partner Orca actually class this into three categories with their wetsuits. They've got the natural swimmer for those flat and natural neutral swimmers. They've got the total swimmer that may have a slight drop in their hips and their legs and then the progressive swimmer that has a significant drop in the hips and the legs and needs a little bit more help lifting them up. You may also see wetsuits referred to as 3, 5, 4, 4 and so on and what this ratio means the first number is referring to the thickness of the neoprene in the chest and the second number in that ratio is referring to the thickness of the neoprene in the legs. So for instance a 3.5 would mean three millimeters in the chest and five referring to five millimeters in the legs. Okay now moving on to arguably the most important aspect of choosing a wetsuit and that is the fit. Get this wrong and you could have water gushing in and slowing you down, or it could be so tight that it restricts your breathing, your movement, and being able to remove the wetsuit quickly. So first things first, a triathlon or open water swimming wetsuit should be relatively snug, and it's definitely more snug than we're often used to with our traditional surfing and water sports wetsuits, which often takes people by surprise. So we quite often see people wearing a wetsuit that's one size or a couple of sizes larger than they should be wearing. Now, fortunately, most brands offer a large range of sizes and even those in-between sizes for the tall yet slim and even extra female sizes for the more curvy figures. 
sizes. And normally it's a case of matching up your height and your weight with the recommended sizes on the manufacturer's size chart. Better again, see if you can try before you buy, or even see if a manufacturer is doing a tour or demos at local open water swim venues. Now, if you find that you are in between sizes, which is very often the case, myself included, then I'd often recommend prioritizing weight over height in the sizing. So for instance, I am actually too tall for the wetsuit that I wear, but the weight or the size of it around my body fits me perfectly. So it's really nice and snug. But all I find is that the arms and the legs finish a little bit higher up, which is absolutely fine. Okay, well, what about all these other wetsuits that you may have come across? The thermal wetsuits, the sleeveless wetsuits, the swim run wetsuits, and so on. Well, these have all come about due to the continual growth of triathlon and multi-sport and the increased need and market with that. So starting with the thermal wetsuits, well, this is in response to the need for increased warmth in cold water swims. Now they've actually almost become commonplace in events like Escape from Alcatraz, Norseman and so on where you are quite often swimming in temperatures well below 12 degrees Celsius. Now many of these feature essentially a fur liner which doesn't absorb water and maintains its loft whilst you're swimming and therefore helping to insulate you. Now this isn't actually new technology, it's the sort of stuff that we would find in many surfing and water sports wetsuits but we're now finding that technology coming over to swimming and triathlon. Then for the swim run wetsuits, well these are quite odd wetsuits and have come about more latterly for swim run events where you're essentially going from swimming to running continuously and numerous times. Now these wetsuits do a very good job for swim run events but I wouldn't really suggest using them for triathlon or swimming because they have been designed for increased buoyancy in the legs to keep and help bring your legs up towards the surface of the water because you're wearing running shoes when you swim. They are also often cut off at the knees and the arms and are probably not even legal in most triathlon events. But going back in time a little bit, and you would quite often see athletes wearing sleeveless wetsuits. Now, they're a bit of a rare find these days, simply due to the advancements in technology, but a lot of athletes used to like wearing them because they felt less restrictive around the shoulders. But as I've said, advancements in technology mean that a lot of wetsuits these days are so flexible and free around the shoulders anyway. That said, some brands do still offer them. And finally, let's talk about the cost. Now, typically we regard the more expensive often being the better, but that isn't always the case with wetsuits. Now, just because it's got high grades of neoprene in there, more technology, getting a high spec wetsuit with the wrong buoyancy for your body position in the water and the type of swimmer that you are, as we discussed earlier, could be more detrimental. It's more important to get a well-fitted suit that works with your type of swimming. And that may well mean getting a slightly cheaper mid-range suit, but that's absolutely fine. Equally, don't simply go for the cheapest option, thinking a suit is a suit. The difference between a top end suit and a bottom end suit can be significant and is far more than just simply the price tag. Often with an entry level suit, they can be less flexible in the shoulders, but maybe more durable and obviously aren't going to break the bank. Then with the top end suits, they do come with more technology in them. They can be more flexible in the shoulders, but you do need to treat them like a race suit that need a little bit more looking after and obviously are going to come with a higher price tag. Now, I would just like to reiterate the importance of a fit with a wetsuit. Now, if you can try it on before you buy it, even better, get into the water. If you can't get in the water, Simply get that suit on, swing your arms around and just check that it's flexible and fits you well. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope that has been useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. And yeah, if you'd like to check out more videos over on GTA, make sure you subscribe just down below.